Like this video and subscribe to the channel right now and get one week of amazing luck. We all enjoy traveling, but there are some sights that you simply do not want to see while traveling the world. One of those things is a terrible individual charging at you with a spear, a poison-tipped dart, or a terrifying mask. So buckle up, because there appear to be a lot of those in the world. Here are the 15 scariest tribes you don't want to meet, ranging from a violent clan on secluded Indian islands to a tiny town in the Philippines. Number 15. The Batak. They are one of the Philippines' about 140 indigenous communities and live in northeastern Palawan, a big island in the southwest. For as long as anybody can remember, the Batak have lived in river valleys along the beaches of Porta Princesa City. According to census data, there are approximately 450 Batak left, who are small with dark skin and curly afro-textured hair. Nobody knows for sure if they are related to another tribe named ADA or if they originate from Indonesia or the Andaman Islands. They hunt and gather, produce plants from seed, and farm using a slash and burn technique. They also deal in forest and natural resources with the marine people of the Sulu region for manufactured items. Unlike some other tribes, the Batake are not isolated from the rest of the world. Batak males frequently work for others, such as harvesting and removing weeds, and they also make a living from local tourism. They used to be nomadic, but it appears that they've settled into a routine by settling into tiny villages and making commodities and selling their wares. Number 14. The Dslala Tribe. Much of what we know about the Dslala tribe in the western Amazon basin comes from Brazilian explorer Sidney Pasuelo, who made the first contact in 1996, and Paul Rafael, a journalist. Despite a few violent confrontations with neighboring communities, the tribe is one of the last remaining groups of people that live almost totally secluded from contemporary culture. The Kord Slala tribe has roughly 150 members, while a branch has about a dozen. Some members of the groupings desired to communicate with adjacent villages, while the majority did not. All tribe members hunt and fight with clubs and occasionally use poison darts, but they do not have modern weapons. They also work up to five hours a day and live in communal houses known as malakas. They have no religious customs, although according to certain sources, they have been known to conduct infanticide. Both men and women paint themselves with red dye from the roko plant, and like other tribes who reject our contemporary way of life, they manage just well. They eat grain, birds, wild pigs, and fruit and have a decent understanding of agriculture. Malaria, on the other hand, is the primary cause of death in their group. Number 13. Akunsu Tribe. The Akunsu Tribe is one you may have never heard of, yet it is on the verge of extinction, with only about four people left in the tribe. They are from Rondonia, Brazil, and speak the distinct Akunsu language. While their numbers may have thrived at one point, in the 1980s, Brazilian cattle ranchers carried out a bloodbath that nearly wiped them out. They are thought to have launched the attack because if they made contact through official routes, their woodland would be turned into an indigenous reserve surrounded by two loggers and cattle ranchers. Those who survived the attack live a simple life as hunter-gatherers who supplement their meals with cultivation. When it was determined that they had just seven members remained at the time, two males, three women, and two small girls, official contact was made with them in the late 1990s. A tree fell on one of their homes in 2000, killing the youngest girl. The eldest member then died, followed by the group's shaman, who died in his sleep. These occurrences reduced the number to four. Number 12. Mokan Tribe. The Mokan are an Austronesian people that live on the Murgi Archipelago, a group of 800 islands claimed by Thailand and Burma. Experts believe they originated some 6,000 years ago in southern China before spreading to several southern Asian islands. These islands are home to between 2,000 and 3,000 Mokan, who live a semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer existence reliant on the sea. There are roughly 1,500 males and 1,500 women, and they speak a separate Austronesian language called Mokan. Even though these islands have a deeply ingrained culture and way of life, it are under threat. Their number is declining, and as a result of their nomadic lifestyle, they are encountering a variety of issues connected to current immigration and property regulations. However, they have adapted to a modern way of life to some extent, their children attend mainstream schools and are exposed to mainstream cultural ideas, however, those living on the Surin Islands tend to live a more traditional lifestyle. 
They hunt flora and fauna with spears and nets and have just begun bartering their food for local market goods. Number 11. Korowai People. The Korowai tribe, also known as the Kalufo, dwells in the Indonesian state of Papua, near the Papua New Guinea border. There were approximately 3,000 Kalufo, and they were unaware of the existence of any people outside of their own tribe until the 1970s. According to the BBC, most of us were made to believe that their tribes lived in tree huts, but this was later proven to be untrue. They erected the tree houses for the advantage of international program makers and did not dwell in them. That isn't to mean their residences aren't high up, they build above flood water levels to minimize damage while also preventing enemy clans from seizing their women and children for cannibalism and slavery. That's right, I said cannibalism. We don't know for sure if it's still a thing, but there have been claims that they conduct ceremonial cannibalism as a kind of justice. Anthropologists say clans with frequent interaction with outsiders no longer engage in these behaviors, but they may continue to do so to boost tourism. Number 10. Chukchi People. The Chukchi people are an incredibly interesting group of people. They are also referred to as Laura Wetland and live in the northeasternmost parts of Siberia in Russia. In the late 20th century there were roughly 14,000 of them were grouped into two primary groupings. Reindeer Chukchi and Maritime Chukchi both speak a similar wetland language but both thrive in various locations of Siberia. The reindeer Chukchi survive off domesticated deer herds and they utilize them for transporting milkmeat and pelts however Maritime Chukchi live off the sea hunting sea creatures and fishing. Their ways of life varied according on their habitat, as well Maritime Chukchi have established communities whereas reindeer Chukchi live in tents and travel with seasonal pasture changes. They also travel on sleds drawn by reindeer or dogs, while Maritime Chukchi travel on boats with wooden frames and animal skin covers. Despite the fact that their lives are very different, their religious beliefs are mostly the same. They believe that invisible spirits are all around us, and they hold shamanist ceremonies for healing and divination, as well as sacrifice festivals. Number 9. The Cargo Cult. The Cargo Cult is one of the oddest cults in existence today. The Cargo Cult refers to primitive tribes that see first world commodities and cargo as spiritual gifts. During World War II, the island of Tana in Vanuatu was a prime example of this cult. Americans worked at a military base on the adjacent island of Efate. Locals were ready to break free from European colonization, and they felt empowered when they saw black American soldiers presiding over cargo. Religions arose as a result of examples like this. The John Frum movement is one of the most well-known nowadays. Members of this cult worship an American serviceman named John Frum. He identified himself as John from America, and now celebrations are held on February 15, which is known as John from Day. A ceremony is held in which men paint the words USA on their chests, raise the American flag, and perform military maneuvers and dances. They even constructed grass-based World War II planes and a landing strip in the hopes that John would return with additional supplies. Another nearby tribe worshipped the now-deceased Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, believing him to be a celestial creature. Number 8. Simbu Tribe. The Chimbu or Simbu people live in Papua New Guinea's Central Highlands. This term was given to them by Australian explorers in the early 1930s after hearing the word Simbu spoken by locals, it was a type of joyful surprise in the Cuman language. They live in the Chimbu province, in a harsh rocky environment that they've transformed into a garden-filled home. They do not live in communities but instead build small settlements with circular dwellings with low-thatched roofs flattened by reed-woven walls and dirt floors. The males all live in communal houses, while the women, children, and pigs live in others. They've absorbed some of our modern influences, with some men and women living together. Despite the fact that these Simbu people do not have many, their most prized asset is pigs, which they use as an exchange item in death rituals, marriage celebrations, and to thank women for bearing children. They also have a pig-killing ceremony known as a bugla ingu, in which hundreds or thousands of pigs are slaughtered, cooked, and distributed. It is a type of tribal trade ceremony used to maintain relationships. Number 7. The Mercy. The Mercy, also known as the Moon, are a religious community in Ethiopia. They dwell near the border with Sudan and have 11,500 members who speak Mercy as their home tongue. They have religious and spiritual rituals similar to many other East African agro-pastoralists. 
They believe in Tumli, which manifests in the sky as a rainbow bird or something else. They also have a Kamaru who serves as a conduit between their god and the tribe. The Kamaru's purpose is to protect them, their animals, and their harvests. Their life cycles are unquestionably distinct from ours. The Mercy are one of Africa's last communities to use lip plates. When females reach the age of 15 or 16, they often get their lower lips pierced with wooden discs, earthenware, or plates. Their plates are also utilized to earn extra money by luring tourists. This tribe also participates in ceremonial dueling, which is popular among Mercy men. It is essentially ritualized male aggression and is more widespread among unmarried men. Number 6. North Sentinelese. The aboriginals of Andaman and Nicobar on the northern Sentinel Island are perhaps one of the scariest groups to refuse our way of life. The Sentinelese are pre-Neolithic people who have lived on the island for around 55,000 years with no interaction with the outside world. Attempts were made to reach out to them in the late 1960s, but to say they were hostile from the start would be an understatement. The government eventually gave up in the mid-1990s. A 5-kilometer buffer zone surrounds their island to protect them from our diseases and to safeguard their sovereignty. You may believe that you can ignore the buffer zone and simply go onto the island for a peek, but we don't suggest it. Two fishermen who were illegally harvesting crabs off the island never returned, a missionary went there to teach Christianity and never returned, and two fishermen who inadvertently landed up there never made it out alive. They attack anyone who comes too close and has even attempted to shoot arrows at a helicopter. Basically, if you want to live, stay away from them. Number 5. Mud Men Tribe. The Acero tribe sometimes referred to as the Mud Men of Papua New Guinea are a group of tiny numbers that wear traditional clothing including masks made of mud. They dwell in Garoka, which is located in the Eastern Highlands province of Papua New Guinea. So, why do they wear masks? Your guess is as good as mine, there are numerous theories, and it's possible that even they don't know the true reason. According to one account of events, they were defeated by an enemy tribe and forced to retreat to the Acero River, where they met a man who gave them ice to kill. Whatever that meant they waited until dusk when they believed the one who was given the ice to kill was captured the enemy spotted him rising from the muddy banks coated in mud and assumed he was a spirit. Because most tribes in Papua New Guinea are terrified of ghosts, their adversaries fled in terror. They returned to the village not aware that their foes were still there yet their adversaries were so afraid that they went back to their village and held a ceremony to ward off the ghosts. Legend has it that they couldn't cover their faces with mud from the Acero River as it was poisonous so they made masks from pebbles. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take me 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal you just leave a like on this video smash that subscribes button and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 15 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 4. Kujarino People. The Kujarino, also known as the Namol, are a nomadic indigenous tribe living in the Amazon rainforest's most isolated areas. They largely inhabit in the Manu National Park in Peru's Madre de Dios region and speak a Puro dialect. Their population is believed to be between 100 and 250 people, up from 20 to 100 in the 1970s. They often avoid contact with non-native people, and we can't blame them. In the 1890s, Peruvian robber Lord Carlos Fitzcarl planned for his soldiers to murder the majority of the tribe in the upper Manu River area. Survivors found their way to secluded woodland locations, where they have essentially remained ever since. There have been numerous sightings in recent years, and there are camps on the Las Piedras riverbanks where they fish during the dry season. During the wet season, they remain in the rainforest, and while they rarely interact with non-native humans, some do. According to the BBC, some people were approaching locals for food in 2013. The Peruvian government really prohibited contact with them in order to protect them from modern diseases. Number 3. Suri Tribe. Suri people are found in Ethiopia and parts of South Sudan. There are approximately 34,000 of them residing in the southwest of Ethiopia, and three groups in total Termagant Chai and Bailey. The Suri tribe, like many other civilizations, has a traditional belief system centered on a sky deity known as Tumu. The Kimura, a member of the tribe, works as a go-between for the regretful people and the sky deity. 
The unfortunate Ethiopian tribe members tend to dwell in remote semi-arid plains foothills and valleys, but this does not mean they are completely secluded from other people. They have rivalries with adjacent Sudanese tribes that raid Ethiopian land, these rivalries have gotten more serious with the adoption of automatic guns, resulting in brutal confrontations. The majority of the weaponry came from Sudanese civil war parties. The Suri tribe is also highly culturally proud, and they practice a lot of rituals that are not typical in our modern society. Women, for example, beautify themselves for marriage by removing their bottom teeth, piercing their bottom lips, and inserting a clay lip plate, but, as they get more exposure to other cultures, this practice becomes less frequent. Number 2. The Night Marcher. The Night Marchers are a scary tribe you don't want to encounter, partly because most people don't want to meet a gathering of spirits in the middle of the night. The Night Marchers are said to be the murderous ghosts of ancient Hawaiian warriors in Hawaiian mythology. On evenings when Hawaiian gods or Kanaloa knights are worshipped, they appear to rise from their burial site and march in a group to ancient Hawaiian battle sites and religious sites. They're characterized as average-sized folks costumed for combat, with war drums, conch shells, and clubs and spears. According to the myth, they never touch the ground or water and are instead suspended above it. They leave no trace of their presence in the first place. The march begins in the dark and lasts until just before sunrise, though they may emerge during the day if they are transporting a dying family member to the spirit world. According to the story, if any mortal stares upon them in defiance, they will perish violently. Number 1. The Agori Tribes. This group has the image of being crazy and cannibalistic. The Agoras are a small group of very devout Hindus who have taken their devotion to a completely different level. They perform most of their rituals and activities in the area around the Ganges in India, where burials are carried out and dead corpses are put into the river. Agoras hold their faith in God, creating everything beautifully. This means that, to them, nothing is too small or primary to not be considered beautiful. This belief even consists of eating human flesh or their own excrement. As weird as it sounds to us commoners, the Agoras find the Shamshan, where the dead are burnt, their favorite place for prayer.